to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay I sense the healing anointing. That's why I began to sing these songs, songs of His presence. Just responding to the anointing. I believe that God is healing people right now. I believe that God is healing people. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Sing, Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. come to meet an idol you didn't come to meet those dead gods that are lifeless and have no power to change ye are come unto Mount Zion the living God is in the midst of his people
Tell him your desire. Change us. Heal us. Set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Just hug and greet one another. Be seated. God will visit you tonight in a mighty way. I assure you. That presence that can change, that presence that can transform you, can build you. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And so I'd like for your heart to be open because God is not doing the same thing. Not when his presence is in this place. We thank him for the gift of his presence. Inexplainable but undeniable. Men can write books on faith. Men can write books on prosperity. But how can you describe his presence? visit you tonight and your life will never be the same. We believe we believe Lord we believe Lord we that cometh unto him must believe that he is Hebrews 11 verse 6 and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him every time you come before his presence you must realize that there is a reward for seeking him you are not wasting your time for he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain He's called the Prince of Peace. When he comes, he truly gives you peace. Peace is not just quietness and rest. He gives you peace. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. His presence brings peace. His presence brings Every time you behold his glory, you see how small those mountains are. This is a sign that you are in his presence. Lord, we thank you. I have a very serious message tonight for the body of Christ. Very, very serious. It's a very prophetic message. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to be ambassadors not only ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven but help your brothers and sisters and families there are many messages that have come out from here that offer guidance direction prophetic accuracy and insight to help a lot of people we made our messages free ministries sell tapes and messages and make 
hundreds of millions from it. But the time for that will come. We are more interested in getting the agenda of the Spirit to the nations, as many who will be interested in hearing. Let me tell you something without missing words. We have a message. We're not just crouching for what to say. But the Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The Spirit is speaking. Helping us to have an understanding of times and seasons. To comprehend the things of the Spirit. And we thank God because he is granting us grace to build according to pattern. We are that uncompromising remnant. Who will not defile ourselves with the meat of Babylon that has corrupted many great men. We have chosen the path of the Spirit. And in spite of the pain it will bring, we will endure. We are this army. Determined to stand until we become all that he has destined us to be. And let me tell you something. It may take a while, but as surely as the morning comes after a night, a day will come. It will take long. But I have an assurance that a time will come when the word of God will be scarce. And whoever has that word will run with it. The price you are paying now is nothing compared to the price men will pay for their ignorance. This is why God is exposing us to his truth. Never take for granted the things that God is doing. This is not a church. You have your church where you worship on Sunday. This is an agenda. This is a program. This is a prophetic agenda. This is what God is doing. Hallelujah. So I like to prepare your heart. Never take for granted. Don't just come casually. For every time he calls you to a banquet, a table has been prepared before you. Hallelujah. And if you will believe him enough to realize you are not wasting your time, then the time of laughter will come. The Bible says it is as soon as Zion travails. The time of traveling is painful. Every great man knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Some of you had to trek to come here. Some of you probably have not eaten anything. There are families, this family, this whole family, father, mother, and all the children left Kogi State this morning to come. What are they looking for? For as soon as Zion travails, she will put forth a seed. I see Barista from Abuja. What you think people just come? You see, this is where what men of God don't get. We celebrate these things and just think this is a sign of increase in ministry. This is nonsense. It's my desire that this place becomes a portal where the voice of the spirit will not be scarce that we will not become part of the noise making preachers talking junks who are out of alignment with the things of the spirit that God will put his word he said he gave me the scroll and I did eat it and he said go and prophesy hallelujah that every time you come here, you will hear the counsel of the Spirit. Not the opinion of a man. Not the program, a doctrinal program of a sect or a religion. But that you will find God. This is why we depend so much in the Holy Spirit. It's not diabolism. We have come to realize that he's the only one who can help us fulfill this agenda. We are perpetually inadequate without him. That's why you hear us talk so much about the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people have a serious problem with that. But Jesus sent us the Spirit to make us like Him. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost. 
the scepter of the king of kings yeah. he's the holy ghost the seal of the age to come he's changing everything in obedience to Christ Jesus told us, he said, and when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will bring to your remembrance all the things that I've taught you, and he will show you. He will take up the things that are of the Father and show you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you. Not common things, but great and mighty things that you know not. An apocalypse, an unveiling of that which has been hidden. The Bible tells us that there are certain mysteries that have been hidden from the church. Appointed for a kind and a type of people. And Paul begins to, text, to tell the Corinthian church, he said, I has not seen. That means no dimension of prophetic eye before now will be able to access those archives. They are under lock and key. Have been sealed until the time appointed. The Bible says the prophets kept stretching through their prophetic eyes. To look into those times. But it was not given unto them. They said neither has any ear heard. What God has prepared for them that love him. But the Bible says these mysteries will be granted unto a generation. Not necessarily just because of our prayer lives. It is part of the prophetic mandate of the spirit for a type and a kind of generation. Hallelujah. That generation, that prophetic and apostolic generation that will step in in beauty and light. There is a kind of revelation and access into deep spiritual things. In other words, the knowledge and the access we've had hitherto is good, but it cannot sustain us in these new seasons that we're stepping into. And so there is a need to cry unto God to say, Lord, let there be an opening of the seal so that those things that have been hidden aforetime, that the scrolls will be opened and the seals will be broken so that these things that have been hidden that even the great prophets could not access would it be open unto a generation but it will always take men who will defy the status quo and begin to press and say lord show us open our eyes open our eyes that we may see we're tired of recycling messages that have stopped people from moving higher Oh Lord, that you will break that seal. And the Lord says, if you call unto me, out of that revelation. For when the people of God were in captivity in Babylon, Daniel understood by books that after 70 years, it was the time of their liberation and exodus out of Babylon. And the Bible says, on the strength of that insight, he began to intercede. And suddenly, Gabriel, the archangel in service, was going to bring the prophetic blueprint. He said, I, Gabriel, am come to give thee understanding. Because every time God sends a revelation, it is signified by an angel. Revelations 1 by 1 verse 1. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John, that he should show unto his servants, and he gave it and signified it by his angel. Every time there are angels that convey revelations and guide the safe arrival of those revelations. That's why to every church there were angels assigned. Their job is to make sure that the blueprint of the spirits that have been revealed will arrive safely. The Bible says, while Gabriel was on his way, the prince of the power of the air, the spiritual wickedness that governed the territory of Persia, attempted to stop him. And as he continued traveling, he wouldn't give up. The Bible says, Michael, the archangel, came. And that message was brought. There must be a generation 
Ruth Heflin left this prophecy before she went to be with the Lord. She said there is a generation that will reveal the glory of God. It will no longer be church as usual. God is doing a new thing. I'm announcing to you. I've shared it here again and again and I've been criticized for it. The old wine has finished. There is a blowing of a new trumpet. It's not the old. It says after two days he will revive us. But on the third day he will raise us up. There are many people who have gone out of sync with spiritual things. The sounds of the spirit are now strange and foreign to them because of all of the benefits that may come with ministry. But let me tell you, there are a people who are determined to stay. He said the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets. There are secrets. He will grant you access to do business in deep waters and you will uncover things. This is what God is training you to become. Happy are you when God finds you faithful. Happy are you when God finds you uncompromising. It takes death to bring certain dimensions of glory into the earth realm. But happy are you. Hallelujah. I want to share with you very powerfully this night. I want to show you by the Spirit of God where the church is in the prophetic blueprint of the ages. It's important for us to know that we are playing prophecy. We are prophecy in motion. Hallelujah. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is an unveiling, an unveiling of prophetic things. Hallelujah. Every story in the Bible Everything that has been written has its natural meaning, but has its prophetic meaning. Everything. An adumbration of the things that God wants to do. The wedding in Cana, for instance, was a type of the old wine and the new wine that is coming to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. It's very important. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to share with you is the current agenda of the kingdom of darkness. I have been very concerned. Please take tonight's teaching very seriously. I have been very concerned at the deafness of even those who call themselves prophets. I'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb a number of you. To the agenda of the darkness. The Bible says that we be not ignorant of the devices. The word devices there means the structure and the methodology. Do not be ignorant. In other words, your ignorance will not become good for you. Do not be ignorant. There is a plot. There is an agenda of darkness. Listen. Every generation and every dispensation has had Satan coming in to corrupt the things that God would want to do. In the garden of Eden, the Bible says that Satan came in all subtlety, having been thrown down. There was judgment in heaven, the Bible tells us. And Lucifer, that cherub that covereth, who wanted to arise he said, I will arise and be as the stars of God. I want to be God by myself. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. And he fell with a third of the angels. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. It was his fall and the preceding judgment that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void. Formless. Let me announce to you. That hell is not some mystery. I've said it again and again. Hell is right in the earth. Hallelujah. And hell is not just a location, but hell is a spirit. The Bible says death, hell, and the grave 
will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not demonic. The lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God. It was designed for the judgment of Satan and all who are in fraternity and partnership with him. So there is an agenda. In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that the fallen angels, because they have the ability to translate themselves, they started translating themselves and intermingling with the daughters of men in an attempt to corrupt the race. That was the agenda of Satan during that dispensation. Hallelujah. When God raised a prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, the Bible tells us that there was a very strange woman, a prophetic type of the mystery Babylon called Jezebel. Every time God has a, an agenda, Satan always has a strategy and a plot. And not knowing it can cause believers severe casualty. When Jesus began to admonish the seven churches that were spread across Asia Minor, a type of the prophetic churches, a, a type of the church age, for every church that he commended, he began to reveal to them the plots of Satan. For certain churches, he began to tell them that there were certain churches that were the churches of Satan, where Satan sat. Others, he warned them that the strategy of the devil is to make men look warm and to say, I have acquired this wealth. In every generation and every prophetic agenda of God, there is a strategy. The Bible says, do not be ignorant. And I want to share with you right now the strategy that the devil would want to use to cause the sons in light to abort the prophetic agenda that God has for us. You ready? Number one, deception. 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 Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at me. Deception is the art of bringing men into error. Are you listening to me? To bring men into error, to cause a disaligning. To bring men into error. There is a lot, one of the things, one of the biggest problems of the church, and even the church in Nigeria right now, is the spirit of deception. It's a terrible agenda by the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. And the Bible begins to warn us that this deception can be so great, even the elect can be deceived if care is not taken. There are lots of things going on in our churches and going on in various places. And because many men of God are not standing close to the ark, there's so much deception. Popular things that look nice but are, are orchestrated by the devil. Many doctrines that we uphold today, they are the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Metaphysical doctrines. They look nice. They look great. They inspire us. But they are not of God. How did it become like this? One mentor teaching another. Somebody going for conference and getting it. Somebody sharing his testimony. Deception. Hmm. Acts chapter 4. God knew that these kinds of things will arise. And it was on account of this that he gave unto men gifts. It's a shame upon the fivefold ministry. That we do not even realize why God anointed and carved out the structure of the fivefold ministry. It's not for jamboree. Not for competition. Not to show which office is greater than which. Are you there? Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are people. 
Now he that has ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended, you see that? He descended to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell and the Bible calls it the lower part of the earth. Not the lower part outside the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 11. He gave unto some apostles. Listen please. MOG, listen carefully. He gave unto some apostle, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Why? For launching, answer me, for building ministries and empires, For celebrating vain accomplishments that have no corresponding effect in the spirit. The Bible says, for the perfecting, equipping, maturing, building up, structuring of the saints. That's why he gave the gifts. That they, the saints, will now do the work of the ministry. To the end... That we all come into the unity of faith. And of the knowledge. Epignosis. Accurate knowledge. Of the son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure. Of the fullness. Of the stature. Of the fullness of Christ. And even that growth is to an end. Verse 14. Read together. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now listen, he said, by the slight of men and the crowning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deception. Deception. There is a lot of deception going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of people don't want to speak. Why? Because they don't want to, they hate the injury. Let me tell you something. If you do not want to stand the pain of ministry, go and get a job. Just go somewhere. We have a lot of men of God who are afraid of their ego, their reputation, and they will not alert the body when there is danger. The Bible says, not many of you should presume to be teachers because you will be judged. Hallelujah. There is a lot of deception in the body of Christ. A lot of gospels, Colossians 2 verse 8. Can we look at that quickly? Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is strong in this place. Colossians 2 verse 8. The agenda of the devil. Are you there? One to read. It's projected. Beware lest any man spoil you. Stop. The word spoil there is let any man make you a spoil. You know when? when let any man plunder you. Cheat you. Let any man spoil you. Through what? What is, hold on, what is philosophy? What is philosophy? Nice, well-crafted, entertaining, intelligent, intellectual presentation of scripture. The Bible calls it philosophy. And what? Vain deceit. Is that in your Bible? It says, after what? The tradition of men and after fraternity with this world. Based on the principles and concepts that have evolved from men who brought it about without the presence of God. After the redument. This is what is happening in many churches. After the redument of this world but not after Christ. We have emulated a lot of junks and things that have no spiritual bearing. We have read all kinds of unbelievers have written entrepreneurial books on how to run a church like a business empire. 
And we have people who are gullible. They went for retreats but not to pray. They went to sit down and listen to doctrines of devils. And they have learned all kinds of demonic ways of manipulation and seductions. And they are deceiving the body of Christ after the regiment of the world. Are you, are you hearing me tonight? With my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down. I will preach of the mercies of the Lord. Some of us are already being deceived right now. There are all kinds of metaphysical deceit please hear me some of us in our innocence we have mentored men that are misleading us in the name of deceit praise the lord there are many churches right now that do all kinds of satanic and demonic things the man of god has special members they take to the river they do all kinds of demonic satanic things because they read the bible does not mean it's of god there are men of god that add the word of god with all kinds of satanic books 12 books of moses 11 books of moses all kinds of metaphysical philosophical sociological junks we put it together the fact that you are compromising and seeing results does not mean it's God. There are natural principles. And men by nature are gullible. That a crowd is coming like this does not necessarily verify that we are of God. Hallelujah. Many of us like results. Anything that looks like results we just go hook, line, and sinker. But may the Lord grant us eyes to see. May we see the handwritings on the wall. And see that for many people, it is written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. God is saying, we have been weighing you for a long time. You have been misleading people. God has been weighing you. But Ichabod, the glory will depart from many churches. And Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. And when Ezekiel went by the spirit to the temple, he saw the atrocities that were happening in the temple. Yet the men of God were still dressing nice. Wearing suits. Wearing kaftan like me. Having flowers around. But they are not of God. Deceiving people. And being deceived themselves. Lord, grant us ears to hear and eyes to see. There are an evolution of erroneous doctrines. Please listen to me. Some of these doctrines have been so long in the body of Christ. They are popular. We like them. You hear them on TV. People can attest to have received results from them. But I tell you the truth, they are not of God. When Moses threw his rod, Pharaoh also threw his rod. And they all became serpents. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come out of her. Come out. It was a cry to the Zion of God. Come out of her. Be not partakers of her hollow tree. So that you will not participate in her, in her plague. And the deception is twofold. Number one, erroneous doctrines. Popular but erroneous doctrines. Well received but erroneous doctrines. Result producing but erroneous doctrines. Number two, listen, look up please. The second, so the first dimension of the deception is a reception of doctrines that may be popular. Listen. Don't get me wrong. Some of the people who advocate these doctrines are innocent people. Genuinely called of God. Uh, 
Alléluia. The second is deception to camp. Listen. I think this second one is even more, is worse than the first dimension of deception. Where people refuse to open up themselves to the greater light and the truth of God's word because of their ego and what it will cost them. Are you listening to me? There are men who would rather die than to begin to explore the new things they are hearing to find out whether they are wrong. There are churches and denominations that will never change. It doesn't matter even if, it's, if Jesus appears to them. They have built a reputation around their doctrines too much. It, it, they will have to die. Many people will not adjust. Rather, they will criticize any truth that is beyond their comprehension. I, I said it during the teachings, the full, the full gospel. There are people who have mistakenly been convinced that they are the alpha and omega of all the keys of revelation of the kingdom and that the sphere of all that they know is all that there is in God. This is another kind of deception. The best any man can be is an effective member of the body. So we have men who are arrogant. I once had a man of God make a very arrogant statement that even if for any reason he has cause to read another man's book, even if he reads it, he will see a lot of things through that book that even the author did not see. I said, look at it. See that? That's what stopped the scribes from receiving the message of Jesus. Because they had known all the books, the Pentateuch. They were the doctors and philosophers of that time. They had every knowledge that they needed. So when Jesus came with a simple message, thy kingdom come, by your will being done, they rejected it because it did not appeal to them. And when they found out that the whole town was running in sincere hunger, just like many people do today, they began to criticize and made it a point of duty that Jesus would die. But his death only escalated the message. And today, millions and billions of people are receiving this truth. It takes a childlike heart. One of the biggest deceptions in the church right now is the ego to accept the fact that, look, could it be that this that I've held on to, could it be wrong? Or could it be that it may not be wrong, but there is a higher light? Are you listening to me? There are truths that are not wrong. The Bible says he made many lights. Those lights gave illumination in their capacity. But then God made two great lights. Let me give you an advice. You must posture yourself consistently. Listen to me. You must posture yourself. Open up yourself and be in a position of perpetual realignment. Because revelation is progressive. That is a sign that you are making progress in the spirit. As you begin to explore the deep things of God, you will begin to see clearer. The Bible says Jesus touched his eyes and he saw men but he saw them like trees. If Jesus had left him, he would argue that men are like trees. But then he touched his eyes again. And the Bible says he began to see clearly. Open our eyes, O God, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. There has been an inaccurate interpretation of the truth of God's word. Inaccurate. And let me tell you something. When it comes... To the accurate interpretation of God's word. It's not about Bible college and theological study. It's about the spirit of prophecy. Because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Deception. 
some of our family members today have been taught that when they leave a particular man of God, their destiny goes with him. Have you, have you had that kind of gospel? Where the man of God ties himself and says, you are tied to the oil on my life. If you leave, you will fail. It's called the doctrine of the Lycolatians. It came from the pit of hell. Popular, result producing, but erroneous. This does not come from God. The reason why many men of God like it is because it's lucrative. It has a lot of financial benefits. If I can have 10 wealthy people tied to my oil. Men have just found ways to camp and to ease away their insecurities and frustrations. So they create gospels that try to make them feel secured by threatening people around. It came from the devil. Some of you are already doing it. Stop it tonight. You are being in deception. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God never gave man authority to usurp authority over another person. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship is not idolatry. It's to guide and instruct in righteousness. Oh, but there is a change. There is a change. I tell you, there is a change. Things will not be as they have always been. There is the hand of God bringing judgment and bringing redemption. Because there are many people that are in this error innocently. Both men of God and people. We used to believe some of these things years ago. But as we began to explore, every time we believed it, something in our hearts told us, uh -uh, go back. And like the Bereans, we went back. And when we began to explore, we found out that there were a lot of question marks. They did a lot of filling the gap. And we said, no way. What is supposed to be in that gap? This is what the Lord has been. There are many of you, when you hear a message, it's not like you are cynical. Something in your spirit tells you, go back. Go back. When other people are shouting, whoa, God says, uh-uh, fill in that gap before you rejoice. Fill in the gap. It's deception. It's deception. It's happening fast. Fast. There are deceptive church growth principles that are taught in ministers' conferences. Deceptive, diabolical, occultic church growth principles. There are deceptive church fundraising principles. Popular, seemingly result producing. But hear this voice tonight I'm speaking to you. John said, I am the voice of one. They said, who are you? Where do you belong? Which camp do you belong? John said, uh -uh, this is not an issue of camp. I am just a voice. One of the first assignments of the spirit of prophecy is to destroy the altars of Baal that a new one be built. Deception. The strength of the kingdom of darkness is ignorance. For as long as the body of Christ remains in ignorance, ignorance, the inaccurate understanding of scriptures. Revelation is not an opinion of man. It's an unveiling of that which has been hidden. And that happens by the spirit of God. Deception. Hallelujah. Number two. Agenda of the devil. For the church in this season is going to shock you what i'm about to say distractions through religious activities are you hearing what i'm saying destructive religious activities hmm. you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise 
You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. He will take all the glory. He will take all the praise. He will take all dominion. He will take all the praise. He will make it yours. Paul seeing and speaking to the Hebrew church. He said with all things have been made under the feet of Jesus. He said but we do not yet see. Although from heaven's perspective it has been so. There is still a contention in the earth realm. That's why God will use voices to make that a reality. That Christ will submit to the authority of the Father. The church will submit to the authority of Christ. And by the agents of the Spirit, the Spirit and the Bride will compel cosmos to come under the authority of the church. This is the agenda of God for the nations. So there is a plot. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a, a shoot out from the spirit of deception distractions there is no time in the church age where believers have activities everybody say after me activities there are there are there are churches that are organizing programs every day every day every day that's what they read from their books engage the members and they won't leave your church so they read it it was written by a business expert and a consultant It looks popular, but let me tell you the truth. You can criticize me, I'm used to it, but I will tell you. These things look popular. Let me tell you where this spirit came from. Hold on. Do you realize that when the nation of Israel were in captivity in Egypt, hallelujah, when Moses came as a deliverer, what happened? The moment he went to Pharaoh and said, God is already making preparation to get the people out. Pharaoh said, ah, let's use a strategy. He said, give them more work. It is because they are idle that they even have the gods to begin to consider an exodus. Occupy them. And when they had the work, it was too much. They told Moses, they said, forget about this issue of exodus now. Because now they are making us look for straw. Every time Satan sees a people waiting. Do you know how many times the Bible talks about the benefit of waiting? I bring you the counsel of the spirit. There is too much distraction. Activities everywhere. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying everybody who is involved in this is false. You get my point? I'm just trying to plot out to you. We think the impact is in the motions. But the Bible says it is they that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. There are many men of God right now who are under pressure pressure to do any and everything just finding activities because they believe that once there is motion who taught us facebook twitter the more you create activities the more people come to your side it is that business strategy we brought to the church because we think the church is facebook so we think when we keep engaging the people It will show that we are increasing. The average believer has no knowledge of the truth of God's word that he can use to stand alone. That's why we depend on pastors. People, I'm not saying spiritual authorities and ministers. No, we are not. We have a place in the body of Christ. But where you become so dependent, as though if you leave the person, you will die. You are already on the road to deception. And men of God pride themselves. How many sons and daughters, you know, 
When people come to me and talk about submission, I feel like running away because I cannot understand what they are saying. Aaron, my son, ah, me. When you visit the secret place, you will be ashamed of taking some titles. It will take God to force you and say, just for organization. Yeah, this is the pride of people. They fight it. Some men have the effrontery to say, this is my earthly father, but he's my spiritual son. Shame on both the man and his revelation. It's a sign of immaturity. We think it is great pride because they clap for you after the statement. Talk is cheap. Distraction. Religious activities where Christ is not the focus. Can I tell you the truth? Look at me. I'm going to tell you a truth you may not hear in many places. Over 70% of the weekly religious activities that are happening in many of the Christian circles are only aimed at increasing the ministry and getting the job going. Christ is less, if at all, a focus in most of these programs. Forget about what we men of God do on stage. We can kneel down and cry and ushers will bring this and will clean book. Imagine holding I'm just trying to show you all the benefits. If you gather 100,000 people non-stop for 100 days do you know how much you will raise is it lucrative or not not to talk of those who will sow into your life by being blessed now i'm not saying every gathering is wrong but i'm telling you many of these gatherings are just a a they don't teach you i'm telling you this they don't share it in congregations. Go, you don't have the opportunity to go for a minister's conference. They will look at you and say, are you a minister? Go out. I am telling you. And people discuss it boldly. But let there be a generation that will not adulterate itself with corruption and error. Many of you will be the only voices some communities will have to hear. The Bible says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect. Will you allow your voice to be corrupted? There is a way of getting all of these things. Look at me. While I was preparing to come, I was taking my bath and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And I was angry in my spirit about the ways people raise money in church. And then the Lord told me something. He said... Listen, listen. I don't know of any church in the world. I don't know of any auditorium in the world that can sit 2 million people comfortably. I don't know of any. The largest gathering in the world that has happened is 6 million people within a span of 3 days. Only 3 days. They could not manage them. But Moses worked with more than 3 million people for a long time. How did he cater for their need? What system was used? There is no auditorium I know on earth, church auditorium, that is as expensive as the temple of Solomon. How did they do it? Were the people so wealthy like that? Or was there a spiritual principle we are missing out? They had enough. I don't know one church that has stopped members and said this is enough. Except it's just emotional frivolities by the pastor. You say, oh, it's enough. Don't bring more money. But David meant it. He, was, he had enough to start building the temple. What are we missing, church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Distraction. There are many of you, it is when you started getting unnecessarily distracted that your spiritual life started dying. Are you following me now? You started with God. You started celebrating ministrations every day. This is how busy my itinerary is. 
in the morning i'm here i don't have time for you i have one in the evening then tomorrow and you started calling it ministry expansion because at the end of it there is an envelope you calculate everything that's somebody's salary your money in a week is somebody's salary and he said lord thank you you spoke to me that the oil of my life will speak be careful because you will not know when you will fall the bible says let he that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall this is what has killed men of God. Many men of God started on fire, but they became administration, administrators. I try as much as possible, and we try in this ministry to do less of administration. God gave us wisdom to create robust administrative structures so that we can focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. Because let me tell you, some of you are already receiving all kinds of invitations you think that a door is opening means it's god that opened it be careful i pray on every ministration before i honor it i don't care who is bringing it you ask the protocol department and they will tell you because i do not want to be found doing what god has not sent me to do when he sends you he will defend you when you send yourself you will defend yourself Hallelujah. These are unpopular parts. But choose whether to be a celebrity in the eyes of men or to be a voice that men can listen whenever they want to hear the counsel of God. I choose the latter. That I will be a voice. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Look at me. Many of you may need to make resolutions this night. Look at me, please. Listen. I want you, as you go back this night, go and edit the things you do with your 24 hours and see how much Satan has choked you with activities that have no eternal relevance. I am telling you the truth. Is that true? Just take out time and in all sincerity through the lens of truth and of the word of God, edit your 24 hours and see how many things you do within your 24 hours that actually leads you towards purpose and has an eternal relevance. You will understand that this is a, this is a strategy from Satan to distract us. I've taken out time to edit my life Especially in this phase of our lives. Look at me. There are some things that are not necessarily evil, but they are weights at this level of life. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. They are not necessarily sins, but they are weights. Lamentations 3.27 he said, it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Some of you may never be great in life because you are not ready to take the burden now. The strength, the glory of young people is in their strength. Pay the price. Now you have the energy to fast. Some of our parents cannot endure that again. But now you have strength. So take advantage of the strength you have right now. Your mind is still alive and active. Explore. Pay the price. I won't deceive you. You will cry. It will cost you something. But when weeping is done, you will rejoice forever. Let's hurry up. The third plot, Satan, is fraternity with Babylon. Friendship. Friendship with Babylon. The Bible says, love not the world. The word love there is do not develop a lust, a craving. Love not the world or the things that are in this world. The word world there is the word system. Are you listening to me? Some people have religiously said, aha, uh -huh. why are you driving a nice car? Why are you doing this? Why are we buying this? We are wasting money. Please, this is not what the Bible is talking about. This is another religion. It is in category one. You know, the deception thing. No. God is not against your looking good. 
Lazarus with all his poverty is in heaven. Abraham with his wealth is in heaven. It's not because they were rich or poor that they missed heaven or didn't get there. You can have a productive life on earth and have eternal relevance. I choose that option. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? But it says, love not the world or the things that are in this world. It says, whoever loves the world, period, without argument, the love of the Father is not in him. Loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, pride of life. Some of us have a craving for vanities. When God wants you to sit down and study, you say, ah, there's one car exhibition they are doing somewhere. It's not wrong, but compared to the priority you have, this is vanity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who can be in church like this and the word of God is coming with this kind of fire that the word of God is coming. Check what they are doing. They are trying to respond to their friend as if the friend is dying. It can't wait. Were you dead before Facebook or, or all of the, the social media? See, some of you cannot even off your phone to pray. It will be as if pain is choking you. Five minutes, just, well, you just run and say, let me check. If nobody has checked, you will send something. You are waiting for who will respond. This is, this is fraternity with Babylon. That's where some of you land on godly attitudes. They wrote poems and jokes that are satanic and anti-progress, anti-greatness. You saw it, read it, absorbed it, and you are using it. See how your life started nose diving. Many people got into satanic relationships. Men of God online. Now, I know that these things have been used very well. There, is, there are demonic sites that men of God have gone to. Demonic sites. All searching for solutions. Huh? Zodiac. Huh? Zodiac sites. You know them. You are pretending as if you don't know them. All of these sites. Click and see who your life partner is. Or click and see how long you have to live. They say you are dying next week. Say, I'm coming for koinonia. <laughs> Who asked you to go and click it? You put your date of birth, everything, the name of your intending spouse, it brought out your life. He said you have suffering and death afterwards. <sighs> you just say, I want to see you. Some things have been going on in my life. What is it? You carried your hands and you went and tied yourself. fraternity longer throat has taken some people they've gone to places where they shouldn't go said yes to things and people they should not say yes to he who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls I refuse I refuse to fraternize with Babylon not her methods, not her way of life. Because the Bible says, Babylon the great is falling. He said, her and all the kings of the earth that have benefited in her merchandise. He said, this great harlot, Babylon, in one hour, her glory has been turned to shame. It will be sudden. And the Bible tells us, come out of her. Come out of her. God is speaking to somebody tonight. Come out of her. Go and re-edit your life. Re-edit your life. There are some of you ladies here. You can have 10 to 20 boyfriends. From the film you watch, they said that's how to be a correct girl. Rich, poor, average, in case anyone that works. You hear a message like this now and think we're just sweating and talking nonsense and you'll be hardened. And if they ask, they say, what kind of man do you want to marry? You say, I want him to be serious with God. He must be a disciplined man. Is it a fair combination? Look at the way your life is.
everybody say after me i will stand out i hope as you are laughing the lord is speaking to you hallelujah deception destruction fraternity with babylon let me tell you the agenda of god now we cannot just talk about the things that the devil is doing what is god doing the bible says the sons of issachar they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do the spirit and the bride say come let me tell you what is happening in the body of christ right now look at me the bible says before the day of the lord please listen it tells us that something is going to happen what will happen he said elijah shall come again before the day of the lord why will elijah come what does elijah represent the transfiguration of jesus christ when jesus was transfigured two people stood by his left and right is that correct one was elijah the other was Moses representing the law and the prophet. Notice that all the people that represent major spiritual truths that should not be aborted, though they died, but their body did not touch this earth. Because their, their representation is an adumbration. Are you listening to me? If Moses' body dies and is buried in the earth and this is i'm going to say something that will create a lot of controversy right now moses represents the law this is a very shocking thing it's against what has been preached but did you notice that against our popular messages moses his body is not in the earth elijah represents the prophet the prophetic has not finished so elijah did not touch the earth. I won't say more than that. Sila, let he that has an ear hear what the Spirit say to the churches. Popular but wrong. Hmm. Let's continue. The Bible says Elijah will come, Malachi. It says, before the great day of the Lord. Listen, every time Jesus is about to appear, whether Jesus as a person or his prophetic agenda, Elijah always foreruns him. Are you following me now? Before Elijah came in the New Testament, before Jesus came, what happened? John the Baptist came where? In the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prophecy. And the Bible says, before Jesus will come again, there will be a manifestation of Elijah. So don't be surprised if you see a manifestation of prophets. But let me tell you where the problem is wrong. Elijah is not manifesting as a miracle worker. Elijah is manifesting to bring accurate knowledge of the understanding of the truth. To prepare the church for the coming of Christ. Are you getting that? If you understand this, you can test prophecy at once. Because see, the clearest proof that a man is a prophet is not miracles and all of this. The clearest proof is that you can bring to us an accurate understanding of scripture. This is what tells us that you are in connection with the throne room. It said by their fruits. Their fruit is not character. Character can be deceitful. Their fruit is their message. Right now, many people believe if your pastor is a prophet, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not against. I have people that are prophets. I know they are of God. We, we, we have times dedicated. We live in the miraculous here. But I'm telling you, listen to me. The primary function of prophets in this day is not to check how much you have in your account and say, promise, stand up. 331 302 879 1110. That's my account number. <laughs> you see that? 
And you say, Jesus. Now, that's the manifestation of the gift. But if that is all we think prophecy is about, that's not the true portrait of the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah first comes, the first assignment is to correct errors by the accurate understanding. This is what we call epignosis. Epignosis is not just a Greek terminology to write books and sell. Uh -uh. Epignosis means the accurate understanding of truth. And this one is by revelation. There is no school that will teach it. The spirit of God will overshadow a man and bet something. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest will overshadow you. There are men who God is overshadowing right now. God is mantling, closing them like a coven and birthing dangerous dimensions of spiritual truth. That's the spirit of Elijah. When I talk of the spirit of prophecy, I'm not necessarily talking of the office of a prophet alone. Correcting a lot of things. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find men who will be able to align and adjust to the corrections of the truth? Are you receiving something? When, listen to me, listen to me. Before the rebuilding of Zion, there will first be a breaking down, a tearing down. Are you listening to me? Then there will be a reconstruction of the house of God not by the patterns of men hallelujah are you listening to me the sacrifice of Cain and Abel is a type of the old and the new church it's a prophetic adumbration what happened because Cain is the elder brother he believed that he understood the rudiments of giving that kind of sacrifice and the Bible says he wanted to sacrifice and do something for God but his combinations were wrong where they received and then his brother Abel, which is a type of the new church, came and put that sacrifice according to pattern. So God is revealing divine patterns on how to do spiritual things such that they become acceptable sacrifices. And this will cause the way we run ministry as we know to change for many ministries. Happy are ministries that can align and take the pain and, and forget about the ego and allow it to happen. But for those who will not change, mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Hallelujah. So the first thing that God is doing right now is correcting errors let me tell you don't confuse this this is what is happening in the body of christ god is raising prophetic and apostolic voices who are coming after the order of elijah with the spirit of prophecy which is the testimony of jesus christ their focus and everything they do by vote and leads people directly to the christ of god and they will come with grace they will deliver mysteries that are uncommon. The fact that these mysteries are uncommon does not mean it is not of God. It will be resisted, but that which is born of God always overcomes. So eventually, light will surpass darkness. It will be strange. When Jesus came, bringing the gospel of the kingdom, the Bible says, the people say, from whence cometh this man? He speaks as one with authority and not as the scribes. The Bible says, when they saw the miracles and the things he did, they said, we have never seen it in this fashion. That means there is a fashion that is coming. And that's why God is preparing you. That you are hearing this message tonight, I want you to know that you are part of the agenda of God. Are you listening to me? That you are hearing this message, whether inside or outside. That you are hearing this message and for as many around this country and the world who will hear this message and those who are streaming online 
telling you that there is an agenda. And for you to be hearing this message, you are part of it. Just as God is using me, there are many prophetic voices scattered around the world. Not many, as it were. But many in that they are within reach that God is raising. The message is the same. The expressions must be different because we are different. But the passion and the communications of the spirit is the same. Preparing the bride. It is the spirit and the bride that will ask this word to come. Can you just pray in tongues as you're seated in one minute? Zipra tese balada bako sofroto balada bakaria de balada bako Zimbre de gele balada bash Zipre gele balada da rosu Zipre gele balada da bako sofra gele balada ba Ziba kata prata shala balada rosu Yes Lord we hear your voice We hearken unto the voice of the spirit and we understand the handwritings that you are writing on the wall. You must open your heart. Some of the things I've shared have challenged some of you. Search the scriptures. And you will find that the word of God is consistent. Come on, just, just express your spirit in, in one or two minutes. The remnant of the house of Jacob, the uncompromising generation, kept under the custody of Obadiah, 7,000 who have refused to bow to Baal. Ventilate your spirit. Just let it find expression. One minute I will continue. Outside, make sure you are stretching. We hear the sounds of the spirit. Ascend to the hill of the Lord. We press higher in the spirit. Shema patala maniketaya. It may cost us now, but we will pay the price. We will sow to the spirit. We will labor in knowledge, uncompromising. 
and terrible day the spirit of Elijah will be poured upon the body of Christ and now is that time in the prophetic blueprint of the spirit where those who are interested Elijah worshippers Elijah preachers Elijah businessmen Elijah workers Elijah politicians, men crafted, forged out of the furnace of affliction with scars that represent their dealings in the spirit. Men who have endured pain, men who have endured tears, men who have died to themselves and their agendas. Elijah's in the military, Elijah's in business. It's the spirit of prophecy that will testify only of Christ and of his agenda. Listen. When the spirit of Elijah comes, the spirit of Elijah will tear down walls. The spirit of Elijah will first be destructive and then constructive. It will break down patterns that have been built after Babel. For there is a rebuilding of the tower of Babel. But the spirit of Elijah is an audacious spirit is a prophetic and apostolic spirit of prophecy that comes to correct the errors of the fathers to correct the errors and they shall be called the repairers of the bridge they shall rebuild the walls and raise the desolations of all generations they shall be called the repairers of the bridge the repairers of the bridge they will fix that which was spoiled. They will fix that which has been popular, yet not in synchrony, not in tandem with the workings of the spirit. They will have ears that are sharp. They will have eyes with the visions of an eagle. 
and they will be able to decipher the writings on the wall they will hearken to the voice of his majesty and will only build the house according to divine pattern they will introduce a fire that will burn everything and test everything it will be a refiner's fire they will come after the order of elijah that the word of god from their mouth will be like fire it will burn it will reshape it will construct partake about attire they will be men of power men of force men of grace men of dexterity audacity they will have power in the heavens it is during that time that the sun will be turned into blood and there will be signs in the earth there will be wonders because the manifestation of this man i bring to you body of christ blow the trumpet i come with an apostolic mantle sound the alarm sound the alarm the seasons are changing there is a renaissance a rebirth of the elijah church correcting the errors of the fathers men of authentic power men of grace men of revelation and insight that have not been taught by any man comparing spiritual things with spiritual that is only taught by the agency of the holy ghost but take a retire those who have searched and understood where the secret place of the most high is they have found it they've come there and they will abide under the shadow of the almighty take us to that place let there be a burden of the elijah church let there be a burden of the elijah church in abuja in lagos in zaria in portacot all over nigeria let there be a button we blow the shofar we authorize heaven elijah's arise elijah's arise elijah businessmen arise elijah preachers arise elijah worshipers arise with the spirit of prophecy which will only testify of no denomination of no sect but the christ of god kingdoms will rise against kingdoms doctrines will rise against doctrines nations will rise against nations there will be a clash of light and darkness and the church of the lord built upon the rock shall stand tried by fire men who have been battered from the furnace of pain and affliction with no agenda of their own whatsoever This is a message from the Lord to the body of Christ. The spirit of Elijah cometh. The spirit of prophecy. There will be a restoration of the accurate interpretation of the truth of the word. Accurate. Accurate. Given by the Holy Ghost, 
the one who inspired it accurate interpretation of scriptures yeah. hallelujah hear me hear me the Lord told me that what will begin to happen is an exposition of darkness you will hear things on media that will shock you darkness will be exposed the veils that have covered the eyes of men for years will be exposed mene mene tekel ufasen I sound it and I prophesied as I was commanded mene Mene, Tekel, Ufesen, the altars of Baal, judgment is coming upon the body of Christ, and there will be a smashing down. For many have been weighed in a balance, and they have been found wanting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the destruction of the altars of Baal, the next will be a fresh walk upon the saints, preparing them for the last apostolic revival that will be coming upon the earth. That will be the next mission of the spirit of Elijah first to tear down walls to correct error and then to begin to rebuild the saints there will be a restoration of the true apostolic the true prophetic the true evangelistic the true pastoral and teacher offices then once again men will begin to call upon the name of the god that will not be strange unto them Men will begin to call upon the God that they know and have a working relationship with. And I tell you friends, when that begins to happen, it will announce the greatest reviver. Smith Wigglesworth prophesied it. The generals of old prophesied it. I announce to you, there is coming a revival. Everything that will be shaken will be shaken. The newspapers will no longer carry stories of politicians. The captions will be the fire of the spirit. Our media, we will not need to pay to go on air. The impact will be so great. It will make news. The fire will fall in nations you did not expect and then after that the heavens will be open and once again we will see him the king of kings the lord of lords the alpha and the omega he will come gloriously upon the silvery cloud and his feet will not touch the earth and the victorious church now without spot or wrinkle will be caught up and we will meet with him and it will begin another dispensation and then the spirit and the pride we say come lord come lord yes to your agenda yes to your agenda yes to your agenda we make way for the coming of the lord jesus we make way for the revival. Jesus is coming. Preachers, don't preach it again. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming with the blast of the archangel. He will come for a victorious church. His coming is soon. That's why the spirit of Elijah is released upon the body.
Jesus is coming. This same Jesus, whom you have seen go to heaven, will return in the exact same manner. I bring you a message. Jesus Christ is returning to planet earth. Jesus Christ is returning. It will happen. It's not a myth. It's not a legend. A day will come. There will be no more business. There will be no more APU. An agenda bigger than it will unfold. We are at the ending periods. Let him that has an ear share and give priority to the agenda of the spirit. Every other thing will become temporal. But only one agenda will stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is what God is doing right now. Right now. If you've ever tried to find out where the church is in prophecy, this is what God is doing right now. Any church, any man of God, you find with the spirit of Elijah tearing down the walls of Baal and building people is a true church. This is how you will know them that are of God and them that are not of God. And all the sorcerers and magicians and the soothsayers and the necromancers that appear they will fall together with babylon i give you glory lord hallelujah please let me pray for the family that came from kogi please come tonight's message is a message to the body of christ you're welcome sir you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, ma. You're welcome, my dear. Welcome. Can you appreciate them? Oh. Hallelujah. I want to announce to you that you are come to Mount Zion. The Spirit of God is in this place. There's no jamboree or magic. Christ is Lord here. The Lord will bring deliverance to your family. The oppression of 36 years will end. Can I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me something about you, sir. It's a miracle that you are not yet dead. Based on the things that I'm seeing. Because death tried you two times. This is what God is telling me. Yes. Is that true? They will go to inside church. He start to collapse and the The Lord is telling me to tell you that death tried him two times. It's the grace of God that has kept him. You see, and and you too, nothing. Huh? I'm seeing a bag with holes inside. Everything you get leaves. Not, I don't try, I don't feel like it. It's alright, it's alright. Please, please, don't cry. Please, help her with the handkerchief, please, somebody. This is a mother, for God's sake, please. Please. You can see how wicked Satan is. And rather than we men of God contending to bring solutions for people, we are looking for names for ourselves. All of you will experience the hand of God. Let me tell you, things will change. You will know you met God tonight. We are his ambassadors. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Who is it? Are you sisters? That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't worry. Don't tell me. Let me talk. Hmm? Because I need to. There is, there is, there, this one is a curse. Huh? Sister, there is a curse. Any man that comes around you, 
will just play around with your heart and pack his load and go. This is what has been happening. A very beautiful girl. Huh? But the Lord will set you free. Okay? And you, I'm going to pray for you. Because the face I'm seeing physically is not what I'm seeing in the spirit. Sir, God showed me, but I didn't talk to you. You are tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing from your feet to your head. This is what makes him to collapse. It's as if you cannot move your legs. Yes, yes. Is that true? It, I'm seeing, but God will set you free. Yes. Madam, please don't cry. Please, for God's sake. It's okay. Hope comes to your family. This is not everybody. Bring their pictures. You brought some pictures. Go and bring it. Did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss this with me? Did you tell me you are coming with pictures? The Lord who sees these things will solve your problems. Amen. Who is this? Where is he? It's not you. The devil put the spirit of hatred between you and him. Even the little resources to send and help you is not doing it. It's not a bad person. This is demonic. Before, where, where? If you no see me, where is that to money? But in now, three months, you no send anything. No tell me anything. So let hope, let it rise. For darkness trembles in your holy land. Sing it one more time for this family. Listen, when I pray for you, things will change overnight. Did you hear what I said? Things will change overnight. Sir, this oppression will leave you right now. I set you free right now. Sheba Katala goes. The heat you're feeling is the power of God. Thou devil of death, leave him. I curse you right now. Take your hands off him. I restore to you everything you have lost. Hell. Hell. Sir. Command financial restoration, restoration of everything you have lost in the name of Jesus. It's written in God's word, blotting out every handwriting. I enforce that which has been finished from redemption, and I declare that you will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. I need to pray for you. Don't worry. Stay. That devil of darkness, leave this woman right now. You are leaving. I curse it. You are the spirit of delay. You are the spirit of death. See, something is coming out from you. Out. Out of this woman right now. reconcile you with all your loved ones may they begin to call you and bless you let your business flourish 
I hold your hands and I give you the keys of blessings as an ambassador of the Most High. Let your times of tears end forever. You will live long. Any curse on you be set free right now. There's a curse on you. Let the curse be taken. Let the curse go by the blood of Jesus. See, there is a demon. Leave her, leave her. See, this is it. Out! 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 Come out of her right now. Come out of her. This is the spirit responsible for this predicament. Out! Come out of her right now. Don't your mother is not a witch. Are you hearing me? Please, please don't let people. This is this is just deliverance. God is doing for her. Come out, you are a foul spirit. Out of this woman right now. Out, out. This curse of darkness. Come out of her. Stand up, madam. You are free. Stand up. God bless you. Don't cry, please. Don't cry, please. Where's that handkerchief helper? Look, madam, wait. Let me explain. Don't be embarrassed. Please. Don't be embarrassed. Alright? Please. Don't let anybody go on. You are not a witch. Please. Do you understand? What happens is that demons can influence people. These are curses and wickedness of the devil. So this manifestation is just the spirit living. You are free now. What you need is to build yourself with the word of God. My dear, let me pray for you. Because the Lord, you were the one that God used as a savior. Huh? Look at me. Just look at me. Let this girl go around. Let her go free right now. I curse you. Come out! Out of her right now! I set you free. I set you free. I open up every door that has been closed. Return no more in Jesus' name. get married huh you believe that so let me pray for you thank you Jesus spirit of delay you're of the devil let this girl go set you free right now. I call forth your life partner into your life right now without confusion, without ambiguity. They will come and testify in the name of Jesus. Please hold your hands together. Holy Spirit, I command salvation for this family right now both those that are here and everyone represented in this picture by faith I command every door that has been closed let it be open right now in the name of Jesus I pray that you will have passion for the word of God because that's the ultimate security and I pray the name of the Lord that is a strong tower let that name shield you as the mountains surround Jerusalem we put a mark over you Whatever has left you will not return. Go and return with your testimonies. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord inside and outside. Please remain standing, everybody. This is the greatest miracle. God brought you here because you are part of the great army that God is raising. I want to give you an opportunity. Or you've given your heart to the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Look at that lady. Please um, take her somewhere. School of Ministry students. Let me see two of you. Two School of Ministry students. Lift your hands now. School of one and this lady. Please, two of you, go and minister to her quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to give you an opportunity. Listen to me. I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. This, is, this altar call is for two categories. One, those who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Number two, those who are one leg in and one leg out. This is a call to take the other leg in. Praise the Lord. The Lord is calling you right now. You've been born again, but you found yourself walking in ways that are not of God, and you want to have a new start. As we begin to celebrate inside and outside, please, we're out of time. I want you to rush out right now and come. Don't be ashamed. The Lord is giving you a new beginning. The Lord is speaking, giving you a new beginning. Do we have people like that? Don't be ashamed. If God is speaking to you, please come out. God bless you, sir. I see you coming. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate them. They are coming. I appreciate them inside and outside. Koinonia is your sacrifice. I appreciate them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just come and line up here. God bless you. Keep clapping. It's your sacrifice for their salvation. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Even when we start praying. I see them coming from outside. Thank you, Jesus. For your glory. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are here, I salute you for making this decision. The Bible says, no man who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. The Lord brought you out by himself. Hallelujah. Lift your hands as we pray together. It's my pleasure pleasure and privilege to lead you to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus. Oh, daddy is giving his heart to the Lord. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. You came and you did not just find healing and deliverance, but you found salvation. And being the head of the home, your whole family will find salvation. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you unable to help myself I've heard your word tonight and I believe I make Jesus Lord of my life I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare according to God's word that I'm saved I'm free I'm delivered I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me make me a sign and a wonder I denounce sin and Satan. I receive grace to live the victorious life in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your power and by your grace. May they never remain the same. I set them free that they be delivered from every oppression of darkness. Let habits be broken in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will have and a hunger for God that nothing will quench in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Thank you. We celebrate you. Please just follow the ushers. You'll have your details and you'll be having a meeting with Pastor Jakes by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Follow the ushers. Write down God bless you. Okay, please. Pastor Jakes is emphasizing many of you, if you brought somebody and he gets born again, please know that you are part of the follow-up bring them five on the dot so that we can have some time to talk with them get them filled with the holy spirit and just direct them on what to do hallelujah praise the lord just give me a few minutes and we'll be out of here you're worshiping with us for the first time this is koinonia i'd like you to jump out god brought you here by his grace inside and outside run like a blessed man in the name of jesus thank you those of you who invited them, God bless you. Let blessings never come, stop coming to your life. Koinonia, is this how you clap for them? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We love you. We're happy to see you. I'm happy to see great faces. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International, where you're blessed tonight. You will never be the same. Never, never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's our goal to bring everyone into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, that you hear the word of God that will prepare you to be relevant in the prophetic agenda of God. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.